All right, welcome fifth graders. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about climate and vegetation uh, for Africa. Remember, you do not need uh, to take notes on this. You're going to be typing a summary for me uh, in the Google box located below the vodcast here. Uh, so please pause um, whenever you get something in your head and you feel like you need to write it down. Um, so then that way you can uh, be more interactive uh, with the video. All right, so here we go. All right, so we're going to be looking at two things here today. Um, first off is Africa's climate factors, right? So there are going to be three things uh, that we're going to investigate here. Um, the first is the distance from the equator. Why is this important? Well, the equator basically dissects Africa right in half, just as much as it does uh, South America, a little bit more so here with Africa. Um, but the equator plays an important role depending upon um, where, how far you are from the equator. Okay, so um, between the equator and these, um, either the Tropic of Cancer or the Tropic of Capricorn are these tropical regions. North of those or south of those, uh, the climate is much different. Okay, another factor is the role of elevation. All right, the higher the elevation, the colder the temperatures, so the less vegetation will grow, less crops, so on and so forth. This should sound pretty familiar um, from our studies of Latin America. Not much is going to change um, with climate and elevation and vegetation and things of those natures. All right. Um, so even though Ethiopia and Somalia are equidistance or equal distance from the equator, um, they have different elevations. So because of the different elevations, the climate there is different. All right. So that's just an example of how elevations change. If you look on a map, you'll see Ethiopia. It's mainly desert. It's dry there. Um, but Somalia has, I believe, more mountain. Or Ethiopia has more mountains in it. Somalia is flatter, um, and it's more tropical in nature. All right. Um, then there's also one huge factor of Africa is that there's not a lot of rainfall. And if what is what rainfall there is, nobody knows when it's going to come. Okay. Um, so you may be an area that receives over 100 inches of rain per year, okay? So think about 120 inches would be 10 feet of rain. So this is about 9 feet of rain, okay? However, most of that rain will come at once, and it may not come for several years after that. So, um, you know, just, again, depending on where you are, depends on how much rain you'll get. Um, and the, also, too, because of the lack of rain, um, there's not a lot of agriculture in Africa, um, or what is grown there is very drought resistant. Okay, it means that it can withstand high temperatures and long periods without water. All right. Okay, so again, here's a map just briefly going over what we're talking about. Um, you know, here's the equator, right? Here's zero degrees. So notice that it cuts right through right through this area here, all right? Um, so again, you know, here's our example of Ethiopia and Somalia, both the same, you know, these regions right here, it's the same distance between the equator, but if you look, you know, because of the higher elevations of Ethiopia, it's going to have a different vegetation um, than what is going to be uh, here in Somalia, where it's going to be drier, all right? Again, this dotted line up here, this is the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. So to put a visual representation on what I was just talking about, um, you know, the further away from the equator you get, the drier the climate is going to be. Okay, so remember that. The further away from the, from the, further away from the equator, the drier the land will be. All right, so the second part is vegetation regions, okay? Um, you just saw a map of it. There's a lot of them, but there's three main vegetation regions. The first is the tropical rainforests, all right? And those are located mainly in West and Central Africa. They have a very rich environment for trees, plants, and animals. So th again, think about the Amazon rainforest, right? When we studied that, lots of lush, beautiful rainforest trees, huge trees, very old trees. Um, have lots of vegetation growing there. It's just a very beautiful place, very hot and humid as well. Okay, um, but this provides great farming, fishing, hunting, timber. All right. Again, here in this 
area of the world notice that there's logging deforestation threatens the rainforests here as well because people need the wood to build houses um, that's the main source of um, housing material in Africa is the timber from the rainforests and you also have where these called these tropical savannas all right more more commonly um, they have grasses bushes some scattered trees and they support the large herd animals so if you think about like a movie of Africa um, and they're in a savanna you know this is when you see like the lion pride walking around you may see a cheetah hunting a gazelle or something like that that's in the savanna okay those grassy dry lands all right um, again the wet season supports farming the dry season does not um, and again the rain may all come at once or it may not come at all uh, so it just depends on um, you know that time of year the, these monsoons that they have these torrential downpour of rains it just it hits like a like a storm it goes for a few days, maybe a week, month, however long it takes, and then it's gone for the rest of the year, maybe five years, maybe six years, who knows, okay? Uh, and then lastly, you know, the deserts in Africa, all right? Um, the Sahara Desert extends across most of North Africa. You see, I'm largest in the world with a question mark because we're going to investigate, is it really the largest desert in the world? What is the definition of a desert, okay? Um, the Sahel and Sahara, southern um the Sahel on the Sahara is the southern border. All right, it's very dry, few plants. It's one of those transition zones because uh, after that, you'll see here, after the Sahel is like a tropical savanna um, and then it gets into the rainforest. So this is kind of this buffer zone. But there's not a lot there. All right, uh, and then the Namb and Kalahari, which you found on your maps, uh, are in the south of Africa and they cover much of Nambia and present day Botswana. All right. Don't know why that just happened. Um, so again, here, down here, down in this region here is where we're talking about those two deserts that are in the south. All right, up here. So here's the here's the Sahara. I have a better map for this. Here's the Sahel. Then you notice that it transitions into this um, kind of tropical wet and dry, and then it gets into the tropical wet. Okay, again, closer to the equator. The more hot, the more tropical it's going to be. The further away from the equator, the drier the air is going to be, then the drier the land is going to be. All right. And then lastly here I have for you uh, just kind of a picture to demonstrate um, demonstrate this for you. Uh, so here's the Sahara. All right, you notice down here in the key it's brown. Okay, Underneath that is the sea heel. So here's that transition zone. All right? And then as we get further down to the equator, you notice it's not that far of a distance okay not even 20 degrees of longitude um, or of latitude sorry so it's in a very short span that it goes from desert to tropical rainforest all right um, hopefully you pause throughout this to type things down if not rewatch it pause it where you need to um, and then we will have a great activity based off of your notes and your summaries if you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the question boxes and we'll get to those in class. Uh, have a great day, guys. Bye.